Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's session, we are going to be looking at the jugular venous pulse waveform, or simply known as the JVP waveform, also referred to as the biggest diagram. So first of all, we want to understand what jugular venous pulse is. When we say jugular venous pulse, take a bottle of water and hold it still and observe the top of the water. What will you realize? you will notice that the top of the water will be oscillating, it will be moving, it will be in motion. So when we say the oscillating top of that water, literally it will be the jugular venous pulsation or simply the jugular venous pulse. But if we come into medicine, we will say that the jugular venous pulse refers to the oscillating top of a vertical column of blood in the right internal jugular vein that reflects the pressure changes in the right atrium let me explain that using this diagram if you look at this very carefully we are having this vein we call the right internal jugular vein which empties directly into the superior vena cava it is in a almost a straight line with the superior vena cava hence any pressure changes realized in the right atrium definitely would be what elicited in the right internal jugular vein and that is a thing by the feature of the right internal jugular vein or generally the internal jugular vein being valveless so if blood is increasing in volume in the right atrium then you can see it filling up the right atrium and what having a retrograde flow into the superior vena cava and furthermore into what the right internal jugular vein so we can see the changes with regards to pressure in the right atrium being manifested in the right internal jugular vein being for the fact that the right internal jugular vein or generally the internal jugular veins are valveless so when we say jugular venous pulse we are referring to what the oscillating top of what a vertical column because the right internal jugular vein is, is vertical oscillating top of a vertical column of blood in the right internal jugular vein that reflects the pressure changes in the right atrium in the cardiac cycle basically so today we are looking at the jugular venous pulse waveform the JVP waveform this is a diagram depicting the waveform of the jugular venous pulse the jugular venous pulse waveform has what we call the ascent and the descent when we say ascent basically we are referring to the positive deflection those that are moving up those that are looking like a peak that's what we are referring to as the ascent this is an ascent this is an ascent this is a descent so if you have something like this then we'll see it's an ascent it's a positive deflection so if you look on the jugular venous pulse waveform it has three ascents and two descents what are they we have what we call the a wave the c wave v wave and for the descent we have the x descent or the x wave we have the y descent or the y wave now with the chronology it is going to be in this format it is going to move in this format because it has a clinical significance which i'll be explaining to you we have the a wave which is followed by the c wave which both are what ascent then we have the first descent being the x descent followed by an ascent that is the v wave then followed by what a descent which is the y descent then in that order repetitively so we have a c x descent v wave y descent in that manner and to replicate it now let's take time to know what each of the waves or descent refer to so we'll start with the a wave a wave basically denotes active atrial contraction i'll be explaining all that very soon a wave basically denotes what active atrial contraction or refers to what atrial systole and in systole what do you have we have the atrium contracting the atrial contract so it refers to what atrial systole or what active atrial contraction then we move to the c wave c wave simply refers to what the closure of the triscopic valve then we move to the x descent the x descent denotes the relaxation of the right atrium resulting in a fall in the right atrial pressure and there's a reason for that which i'll be explaining then we go to the v wave v wave simply refers to venous feeling that is the passive feeling of blood into the right atrium the passive feeling of the right atrium is what the v wave denotes then finally the y descent the y descent simply denotes what the opening of the triscopic valve now that we understood the 
meaning of the various waves on the JVP waveform, let's understand why they follow in that particular pattern. So let's take the right side of the heart with it linkage to the lungs. Again, you should know that if you look at this diagram carefully, you will notice that the C wave, the X descent, and the V wave all occur in cysto, ventricular cysto, when the ventricles are contracting. And the Y descent and the A wave occurs in what? Diasto. So in cysto, you have the C wave, the X descent, and the V wave. Whilst in diasto, you have the Y descent and the A wave. There's a reason for that. Now let's go back and explain why they follow in that pattern. Now, let's take the right side of the heart. We have the right internal jugular vein, which is coming from the top, followed by the superior vena cava. Then we have the right atrium, right ventricle. We have the triscopic valve here. This is the triscopic valve. What you are seeing here is a triscopic valve. This is a triscopic valve. The triscopic valve is what is here. Triscopic valve. We have the inferior vena cava, which empties into the right atrium. Then we have the pulmonary artery, which empties what? The right ventricle into the lungs. Now, you should know that during diastole, ventricular diastole, the atria will be contracting. So what happens is that whilst the ventricles are relaxing, and the reason why they have to relax is that the pressure in the right ventricle needs to what, drop so that the pressure that is in the right atrium will be bigger than it so as to create a pressure gradient for blood to flow from the right atrium passively into what, the right ventricle. So as the right ventricle is relaxing, the pressure within it is what? The pressure within the right ventricle would what, fall. Then that is when you have the right atrium contracting. And the right atrium will be contracting to generate pressures to push blood which will be left in the right atrium into what, the right ventricle. By then, the triscopic valve is already what, open. So if the triscopic valve is open, then what, what are we going to see? We will see the right atrium contracting. And as the right atrium contracts, it will be pushing out the blood which will be left in the right atrium into the right ventricle. And that contraction of the right atrium causes a positive deflection we call the A-wave. That is what you see on the JVP waveform as the A-wave. Now, after the A-wave, what are we going to have? The right atrium has been completely emptied. And before the right ventricle can start contracting, definitely, you need to have the triscopic valve closed. So at the end of diastole and at the beginning of systole, the triscopic valve will close. And when the triscopic valve closes, it generates a positive wave we call what? The C wave. And once the triscopic valve closes, when, when we have the C wave, what then will happen? The right ventricle will start contracting to push out blood from each chambers through the pulmonary artery into the lungs. But we are not interested because for the jugular venous pressure, we are referring jugular venous pressure, jugular venous pulse. Our reference is to the right atrium. So everything that we are going to be saying will be in reference to the right atrium. So once the C wave from which denotes the closure of the triscopic valve, what will happen? By then the ventricular system has started. And the C wave will happen at the beginning of what? Cysto, meaning the closure of the triscopic valve occurs at the beginning of cysto. That is why we are seeing it in cysto. And when the closure of the triscopic valve happens, we will have the right ventricle also what? Contracting. Contracting, contracting. By then, the right atrium would go into a state of relaxation. Why would it go into a state of relaxation? To ensure that the pressure that is in the superior vena cava and the right internal jugular vein becomes greater than that which is in the right atrium to allow for passive feeling of the right atrium. So as the right atrium relaxes, the pressure within it would what? Falls. So the relaxation of the right atrium will cause a negative deflection, which we call the X descent. That's why we are saying that the X descent denotes what? Relaxation of the right atrium. And if the right atrium is relaxing, what will happen to the pressure within it? It will fall. That's what we are saying denotes the relaxation of the right atrium resulting in a fall in the right atrial pressure. So that is what we are going to have what? The X descent. After the X descent, what do we see? The pressure in the right atrium falls and the pressure in the superior vena cava and the right internal jugular vein becomes greater than that which is in the right atrium. 
And what was going to happen, there will be a pressure gradient under which blood will flow passively from the right internal jugular vein and the superior vena cava into the right atrium. That's why we say that as that blood flows passively into the right atrium, it will be hitting the walls of the right atrium, generating a positive wave, a positive deflection, we call what? The V wave. That is why we say the V wave denotes what? The passive feeling of the right atrium, or simply venous feeling. After the right atrium is completely filled, what happens next? Definitely, the triscopic valve will have to open. It will have to open for the blood to leave the right atrium and go to what? The right ventricle. The opening of the triscopic valve definitely will generate a negative deflection, which we term as what? The Y descent. So that's what we are going to have what? The Y descent. Simply means that once the triscopic valve opens, we will have a, a negative deflection we call the Y descent. And it is only when the triscopic valve opens that we will be having the filling of the right ventricle with blood from the right atrium. And that is when the ventricles will go into a state of relaxation. So the state of relaxation, we are having it from where? When the, the triscopic valve is what? Opening. So the moment the triscopic valve opens, the ventricles will go into what? a state of relaxation we call diastole. And that is when the right atrium will start contracting again. And as it starts contracting, what are we going to have? We'll start seeing what? An A wave again then the process continues in that direction. I believe we've learned something new and we understood all that I've outlined. Thank you very much for staying through the lesson. Kindly subscribe to my channel, like, share, and I recommend to friends as well. And don't forget to recommend the next concept you'd like to see on my channel in the commentary section. My name is Dr. Adele, and once again, this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye. Thank you.